Thank you, and hi again. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about methane on the, the moon. So back in 1971, Apollo 11 and 12 samples detected a methane in the samples, and it was or indigenous methane in the samples, and it was hypothesized that could this methane be formed from the solar wind hydrogen and carbon. Um, later in during Apollo 17, it was possible that the lunar atmosphere composition experiment also detected methane within the lunar exosphere because they detected a mass peak at 16. Later in 2016, LADI NMS confirmed that there is methane in the lunar exosphere and they saw a really interesting trend that is shown in this plot here. And what they found is that on the day side, there is a peak of methane of 400 to 450 molecules per cubic centimeter. So we're going to kind of dive into what this plot says about methane. So what's the life cycle of a molecule during a lunar day? So the methane could be trapped and adsorbed onto the lunar night side as being as lat Laddie NMS is showing in this plot from zero to about 6 a.m. And it could be trapping on the silicate surfaces. And then once the sun starts to warm up the surface, the methane is thermally desorbed from the surface, leading to this peak that NMS detected during just, just after dawn. Now there are three outcomes for the methane molecule at that point. It can either escape the moon, follow a ballistic trajectory migrating around the surface, or be lost to ionization. Let's say that it follows the ballistic trajectory and it migrates. Eventually, it will repeat this process multiple times until it lands on a very cold surface where it is no longer able to be thermally desorbed. So it's finally home at last. Um, and it's believed that most of these surfaces are going to be in the PSRs. PSR temperatures are really great for this because they can trap methane, adsorbed methane permanently unless an outside source like a micrometeorite impacts it and allows it to be released from the so surface. So what we think is that based off of that plot showing the, the potential migration of methane, it could be a continuous source to the PSRs. And it may be able to build up over time until it reaches a saturation level of one monolayer. Uh, this methane could also then be sequestered to create a larger deposit in the PSRs by regolith overturn. So Chiara did a, uh, a calculation on how much abundance of methane might be there, because what we really want to know is, can we look for it? And what does, what does a monolayer of methane actually mean? So from some simple calculations, she estimated that there is about 100 ppm of methane present when, with a 100% monolayer. Now, if you assume that this is all hydrogen, that's about 27 ppm of hydrogen, which could account for 20% of the hydrogen measurements detected by Lunar Prospector. So can methane condense on the moon? Um, can it form ice? Doing some more simple calculations, Kiara found that the sublimation rate of methane at the coldest measured place on the moon of 25 Kelvin was two meters per billion years. This is huge. So absolutely uh, no methane ice could possibly be maintained over a, a, a long period of time. So ice, methane ice is not really a factor even at the coldest locations on the moon. So we're really looking for adsorbed water or sorry, water, absorbed methane. So two upcoming missions can look for this absorbed methane. And those two are the Viper mission and Lunar Trailblazer. Uh, the Viper mission has the nervous spectrometer and the MSOLO mass spec that can really look for these. And I'm gonna focus on these ones because it has the potential to make some really neat observations. So we're going to look at this plot and see how can we detect adsorbed methane with the nervous spectrometer, um, especially since its band is at 3.4 microns and there's a large three micron total water band there. So as a Viper COI, I am working to use the nervous instrument to kind of look for this methane by doing a ratio. 
So what we want to do is look at an illuminated surface that we know isn't going to have any adsorbed methane on it, measure that three micron band, and then use that to remove the amount of water present in a PSR and potentially pull out that methane 3.4 band. Now, if it's present and assuming that the nervous spectrometer can ha has a sensitivity of 100, then we should be able to see 100 parts per million of methane on the surface in a PSR. Um, and this is exactly what Chiara calculated to be a 100% one, uh, one, 100 monolayer. Another interesting experiment we could do with Viper in the MCLO instrument is we could go and use the tungsten lamp or the belly of the rover to warm the surface in a PSR and then monitor the volatiles that are coming off of it to see if we detect any methane present. However, there's one issue. We don't know what adsorbed methane looks like in the near infrared at 3.4 microns. Those spectra I just showed you are models. So we currently have no laboratory information of this adsorbed methane. And what Kiara and Paul are doing in Hawaii is designing and building an environment chamber to do study infrared studies of the adsorbed methane on multiple samples. So this is a picture of the doer and the environment chamber that they're working on. Um, you'll have to ask them for a lot more details on that. But the experiment they're planning on doing is looking at adsorb as dosing a sample with adsorbed methane and then measuring it for a variety of different samples with different albedos, as well as for lunar, lunar simulates. And they say that the experiments are happening either this month or next month, so stay tuned. And that's it for this talk. Thank you. <laughs>